I'll never find anything out here. All right, there we go. Nice. A few more weekends like this, and I can quit my day job. Here we have the Stevens Model 258A manufactured by Savage Arms in Chicopee Falls, Massachusetts. I'm not a history buff, but what I can find online on the history of the gun and its manufacturer is that the Stevens Company began during the Civil War and was bought out in 1920 by Savage Arms. Savage Arms has kept around the Stevens name except for a brief break of it in the 90s, but they resumed using it for their lower end bolt action rifles. This particular gun I did not find metal detecting, it's actually my great grandfather's gun. It was my daddy's mama's daddy's gun. It's just been sitting in a house, kind of rusting away, deteriorating over time. If we'll, we'll take a closer look at the finish of it in a little bit, but the, uh, the safety doesn't work. The bolt actually does work, but it's very stiff. I'm not particularly fond of this particular gun because I don't really like bolt actions given that I'm left-handed, they're not ideal. But this one was manufactured in 1951. That can be told by a little stamp on it on the on all of the Stevens, I believe pre-1970, somewhere on the gun, usually somewhere around the barrel uh, where it connects to the action will be a small stamp that'll have a letter and a number. The letter, the letter actually corresponds to the year, not the number. People don't really know why the number's there. Uh, and there's not really anything that I could find online about what the number means, but I have a C and that means that it was made in 1951. The only markings on it other than that are the, the, the manufacturer and it says proof tested 20 gauge, two and three quarter inch uh, chamber. So it does have a removable magazine here that is functional. And let's take a little bit closer look at the uh, condition. So it looks like pretty much every part of this gun is has some form of uh, at least cosmetic damage. I uh, haven't looked at it too much, but it does appear that you can take the whole thing apart, strip it down to the stock with just a flathead screwdriver. We may run into something else along the way, but uh, all the all these exposed screws are flatheads. Let's just start out taking the trigger guard off. There's our safety. It's freed up now, so I don't know what was holding it earlier. Something was binding it. See quite a bit of rust inside in the barrel. Pretty basic safety. You can see when you slide it forward, it blocks the trigger from being pulled. Slide it back. It just moves that out of the way. Now the trigger can be pulled.
I want to be careful around these areas because if I sand it too far down, pieces won't fit back in correctly because they were good and a snug fit and just right here, it's not even a fingernail's width, but it is slightly indented in. Now, whether that's because it was cinched down for so long over time that it just compressed the wood or if that was something intentional. This stock's just buttery smooth now, so it just needs to be cleaned up, get the sawdust off of it, and we can move on to the next step. So in about a, a minute, it's already started to rust very badly. It's just surface rust, so it'll come right off with some steel wool. All right, we've got our barrel suspended by some wire across the tailgate. I'm sure this will be kind of messy, so I'll put a trash bag underneath it. We're using the Birch Casey Perma Blue Paste Gun Blue Kit. I've never done this before. I haven't even opened it to look at what's inside. Got your primer, removes blue and rust easily and quickly. Cleaner degreaser, then your Perma blue paste. Got some very fine steel wool here. A sponge, some paper towels, three daubers, 400 grit sandpaper, rust protection, more rust protection, and then I'll spare you all the reading of the instructions. All right, step one, we're going to use the cleaner. This is where gloves. No fingernails with gloves. Just be very thorough on this part to make sure you get all the surface area or else you'll regret it later. It doesn't specify what that means, but I imagine the bluing doesn't stick if you're greasy or oily. It doesn't really matter if it gets a little surface rust now because we're gonna apply a rust remover after this. So we are gonna go rinse it with water after we're done with this. Specifies cold water. I guess you don't want the surface of the gun to be warm. Now we're going to apply the rust remover. This is bluing and rust remover. This shouldn't take too long because we already used the electrolysis to remove the bluing and the rust, but we do want to follow what it says to do. I also don't believe that the electrolysis actually took away all of the bluing. That's why it's still dark. I think that it, um, I think it just took away the bluing that was under the rust. 
but I could actually see the bluing globbed up on the uh, on the piece of sacrificial metal. It says that it's critically important that you don't rush this step. This stuff kind of has a smell. But now it says to go over it with the fine steel wool that the kit included. Alright, it says that we only want to let the bluing stay on the gun for 30 to 60 seconds before rinsing it off with cold water. So we're not going to do it all at once because I can't cover the whole thing in 30 seconds. So we'll probably do just this and then just this. Probably do it in two sections. Get this paste on here. very streaky it's really probably more poor application than poor product but there it is without any there it is with it Alright, now we're going to try to blue all this. Alright, the whole thing has one layer now. It's not enough because, I don't know if you can tell from the camera, but it's pretty uneven, very streaky, but probably just poor application. So we're gonna go for a second coat. Time to rinse. It's looking much better after a second coat. need to apply a third coat. At about coat three, this is gonna be preference. I want it to be a little bit nicer. It's still got some streaking, but you can't stop at any point whenever you're happy with the way it looks. Now it's looking a lot more how I'd like it to look. Still need to get back here more. Still streaky and uneven. Mostly done now, it just has a little bit more back here that needs to be brought up to what the barrel is. And we'll have it all evened out and then we'll sand it down to even it the rest of the way. Now the final coat's been put on it. It's fairly even. These spots right here, it looks uneven, but that's because it's wet, and that's where it started to dry a little bit. Then I need to uh, sand it to smooth it all and even it. 
We'll just be taking the 400 grit sandpaper for that. Alright, the final layer of bluing has been placed on it pretty even. Said if it's not even to just use the uh, steel wool, but it looks good to me. It's the look I was going for. So now we'll go ahead and uh, apply their rust protector and then we'll let it cure overnight. Are you a poop eater? This is just a little towel like they give you at Sunny's, coated in oil. All right, so we're just gonna do a thin layer of sanding just to get the tackiness from the stain off before we put a clear coat lacquer on it. Now it's nice and smooth without losing too much of the rich color. It's not tacky anywhere and it's ready to be painted and clear coated. I'm not a big fan of this uh, dipped looking end, but I am try trying to stay true to the original uh, design of it. So I'm gonna put that back on there. Just gonna tape off. Good. Okay, so now I'm using some Zinsur uh, Bullseye Shellac to clear coat it. Uh, there was, I'm sure there was a cheaper one there, but this was what they had at Home Depot, and it was um, it says dries in minutes, and I'm sorely lacking in patience. So this is the one I got. So I'm just gonna set this up a little bit different so I can clear coat it without getting any of the wire in the way. said right on the can they're not responsible for user application because they can't control it. Yeah, I'm gonna let that dry because I have a bad tendency to over layer and just keep spraying and spraying and spraying so I'm gonna back off for a while. All right, it says to it says to give it a second coat while it's still tacky. That doesn't make sense to me, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that before this gets nice and hard and dry, like I would think that you'd want it. And when that gets dry, we'll be good to go.
All right, we're finally gonna assemble the gun. It's not been assembled since we initially took it apart and uh, all the pieces have been individually refinished. So now when we put it all back together, we'll have a restored gun. So I guess we'll just start at the butt plate. All of the screw heads, I blued them off camera. I didn't do anything real fancy procedure, just kind of took some bluing and rubbed it all over the screw head enough that it would match the, the barrel of the gun as well as um, just did some on the rest of the screw to help prevent rust, but nothing fancy. The butt plate still fits nicely with no lip from sanding or anything like that. It's a uh, perfect fit still. Move on to the trigger guard. Got some very tiny screws. You want to torque it to about a uh, snug and put the magazine cover. This screw that goes into the magazine cover also holds the barrel in place, so got to put this in first. fits very tight. Torque it to slightly past snug. All right, here it is, the finished product. Let's go try it out. This gun's probably not been shot in 20 to 30 years, so let's try it out. It didn't explode. That's a good sign. We're using some reloads somebody gave me. Uh, they've been reloaded enough that they won't really take in a pump action. So uh, they work just fine in a bolt action though. action 20 gauge if you find one of these that holds hardly any value uh, but it is sentimental value it was my great grandpa's gun and I had a lot of fun restoring it so I'll give you one final look at it here and we were able to go from the back porch 
to now it can it's valuable enough to me to go to the safe I hope you guys enjoyed watching.